Hey guys, how's it going? Ghosty Rich here today. So, I'm going to be putting in a water cooler for my CPU today. Um, this one's made by Thermaltake. I ended up getting it for a super good deal, so I'm going to be putting this in because it's going to be better anyway than my stock Intel one. So, um, if you're going to be attempting this project, what I first suggest you do is before you pull your computer out from everything that is pl currently plugged into it is take a couple snapshots you're going to, to take some pictures so that way you know where everything plugged into that way when you go to plug this back in it makes it super easy and you're not putting different uh, things in each USB port this can usually lead to sometimes making you have to try and find the hardware afterwards and I mean it can be done it can just be annoying waiting for your system to do all the work so to cut yourself some slack, you might as well just quickly take a couple photos, then you know where everything plugs in. Next thing you're going to want to do is unplug everything from the back end. And from there, you're going to take it to, I like to say static free environment, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, it does and it doesn't. It means basically don't try and do this on carpet usually because that usually you know builds up static. Another thing is if you're cautious or really scared about burning something out with static in your computer you can always take a piece of wire or copper wrap it around your wrist and then attach it to the computer case the other end of the wire and make sure the copper is touching the case it'll ground you out and it'll make it safer if you'd like to you can also buy these wristbands anyways so you want to grab uh, Phillips and pop out these two screws with me they're just I have uh, just twists off, finger tie offs on this side. And then you're going to just pull this forward and lift. As you can see, I have the uh, white plug already done. So to make this easier for you, they're really easy to disconnect. It's just right there. And you can unplug all that. All right. So the next part that you need to be doing once you get this case off is... You need to see what's all plugged in. As you can see, I have two wires that are the same color. So what I'll probably be doing is putting electrical tape on the one that goes on top. So that way I plug these in exactly the way they were. So you can always take a picture of this, but also put tape, black tape on the one that's sitting on top if you have, you know, uh, two of the same color wires. So that way you can remember. It just makes it really easy for when you put it back together. So uh, things that we're going to have to remove. I'll probably be removing this fan because I'm going to be, this is where I'm going to be putting the radiator for the uh, water 2.0 there by thermal take. So yeah, I'll be bolting that right here. And then the we're going to have to get on the other side of the motherboard here, so that way we can put on the back piece where it screws down the major uh, CPU portion, or the cooler portion is going to screw down. So. Uh, right now, things to focus on are getting all this wiring out of here. Like I said, take a picture if you're skeptical, because that way you know that that's where stuff went. And we're just going to be cleaning off the top end. RAM isn't really, you could pull it out if you want to. It's not a big deal with RAM, but your graphics card, if it's big like this, this is the 670, you're going to definitely want to remove it. That way you don't damage your graphics card and you don't damage the board, because it's going to be a lot of weight on the board. So be sure to remove this. All right, so stay tuned for the next section. One sec. All right, guys, so the next portion you're going to want to do is after you get everything gutted, like your graphics card, and you get all the connections and everything out, like I said, if you took a picture, it should be really easy when you put it back in. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to see the Phillips screws on the motherboard. There's six here, but there is Sometimes more does depends on your motherboard. So just look for those Phillips and then pull them out. And from there, we can slide our motherboard kind of sideways and out on an angle. I'll show you after I have it out. But yeah, that's how you're going to basically remove it. Okay, stay tuned. All right, guys. So the next portion is after you get this out, which is, like I said, it's really easy. All you're going to do is after you get your uh, six screws or how many ever screws you have for your motherboard out, um, all you're going to be doing is push it a little bit over this way. It'll come off the grounding uh, pegs right here. And after you get that, you're going to lift your motherboard out. After you get your motherboard out, we're going to be popping off the CPU fan here. And then 
you'll be able to see on the other side the holes going right through the motherboard and that's when I'm going to crack open that box. So for now, actually, if I were you, just get this fan, old fan off. And the next thing you're going to want to do is if you have a vacuum cleaner, you're going to want to suck out your case of any dust. So that way you can start, you know, cleaning how often you pull your motherboard out, right? So definitely a good idea to take advantage of having it out and cleaning up the case on the inside. All right, stay tuned for the next section. Hey, guys, how's it going? So as you can see, uh, the holes are right through on this side and they go through on that side too all the way to over here now with your old CPU fan when you're trying to get it out it has these little plastic barbs it might be a little bit tougher for you to try and pull out so if you want to be careful what you can always do is unscrew them or unbolt them and then there'll be those two if you can kind of see on there there's those plastic barbs you can work them off with your fingers on the other side so from here we're gonna be cracking open their uh, new cooler box and then we can start to uh, set this board up for the new water cooling. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so I just uh, pulled this stuff right out of the box and um, got to see the new fans. They look pretty sick. So that's the fans that are going to bolt on each side of the radiator, I guess. And then uh, this is, of course, the radiator. This is the new heatsink, which will bolt on after, but the plates are what we're going to need out of this package. So we're going to pull this out, and we're going to match these up to what they say in our booklet. So once I find the one for my CPU, I will show you and we will go from there. All right, so stay tuned for the next section where we will bolt in the back bracket. Hey guys, so what's gonna be going on now is we're choosing out our rings. If you have a Intel, you're gonna be using this. If you have an AMD, you're gonna be using that combo. So a um, good way to figure out if you don't know is to Grab your motherboard box or look up your computer model online. And if you look up your model number, if you bought a pre built, it'll tell you what you have, or you can just look at this uh, as in how it bolts in. But I checked out mine um, just as an example, and I have an 1155. So if I go to my book here, it's going to have for AMD and it's going to have for the LGA, uh, Intel. So I've got the 1155. I'm going to look on our brackets right here. And I'm going to, if you look really carefully, probably not going to focus in, but uh, it has an 1155 spot. And I'm going to be putting in some blocks or some hardware into there, which is in this baggie right here. So I'll be putting in the locks in there and then. I'll show you from there when I start sticking this to the back of the board. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So the next thing you're going to want to do is take your plate here. And uh, say if you don't know your socket size, you're like, great, I don't know what to do. Um, what you do is just take your fan and actually match it up. See, I went with the 1156 hole for my 1155 because those are the ones that matched up with the size and the holes on this because it actually doesn't actually say on uh, the ring they only list it for the three sizes 1156 and uh, 755 and 1366 since 1156 and 1155 are the same I guess CPU cooler then it's going to go into those slots as you can see how they sit you'll know how they sit because uh, it will only have a part where they countersink and you just countersink these in by squeezing them in after you do that You'll see these two pieces of sticky that come with your kit. Pull off one side and then put them on the two openings. It's pretty obvious where they go. Uh, you'll see two spots narrow enough for these to fit. You put them in there. Don't ta Only take off the one side and stick them down. Don't take off the other side yet. First test fit and make sure everything's going to sit inside the board. And then after you're confident, pull the sticky off and slap it inside the hole. From there, after we do that, we're going to start putting our motherboard back in. So, like I said, first let's test fit and then get that in there. All right, guys. So as you can see here, I've got the holes all lined up. It's sticky to the board. And um, yeah, just uh, make sure that the holes are all lined up first. I went this way because, of course, if you try it any other way, you're going to get stuck on this piece or other pieces. So, yeah, once you get her in there, it's time to flip the board back over. You can check if you want to to make sure everything's going to line up on this side. But the next thing to pretty much do is uh, 
do what you did in reverse. Start to bolt the board back in. And after you get the board back in, look at your photos and plug everything back in on the top of the board. Uh, don't quite put your graphics card and stuff back in yet. First, you're going to want to put your CPU all together and make sure that's all going to fit in there. And yeah, so like I said, from this point, if you want, test this stuff out. I'm going to show a quick video on how I put this stuff together. And then we're going to put our, everything back together in there. All right. See. Hey, guys. So if you look at these pieces they will say the socket one size of socket on one side and one size of sockets on the other side that you need to put it in so the size that you want wants to be facing out you want to do it like that and then next if you look here you'll see that there's a almost a batman symbol but uh, I'll say a V symbol and if you look at those there's a V pattern to the top end of these little ones right there uh, can't flip it over and what you're gonna want to do is basically make the match click them together and then after these click together you ram the, or not ram but you squeeze the post between it and it clicks and holds the whole shenanigans together but that's what it looks like after you've clicked it and then that's what it looks like after you put the post through alright so stay tuned for the next section hey guys how's it going so uh, as you can see here I've bolted the radiator to the side what you're going to have in the package is eight screws and four washers the four washers go on the side of the case right here and so you'll bolt it in like that and then of course you will bolt in the screws just like this without the washers on this side and uh, you know you've bolted the fans in the right way if you take a look at the direction of this T but on the other side of this is arrows and it'll show the air flows pushing out this way which is what you want um, definitely seems sweet so far it's kind of compact and just enough room to access our uh, CPU area here as you can see I've slow I've just lightly tied this in so I had something to grab onto when I was putting the board in I figured that would be the best grabbing point because it's not supported only by solder joints so that is, I'll be loosening those off now you also notice you got two packs of these if you look one's gonna be a very coarse thread and one's going to not be so coarse and it'll be a smaller thread um, you're gonna want to use the smaller thread on it okay thanks hey guys how's it going so the next part that you're gonna have to do is you're gonna slide the metal ring over the top end of this thing uh, you're gonna see the teeth as you can sort of see from the side here there's uh, teeth every little bit you're gonna slide the teeth through the openings turn it sideways and it locks it in but if you look it slides side to side really easy so it's not actually locking it in so what you're gonna want to do is take the plastic ring put it over top and then click it in like it shows in here and what it does is it locks it in so it doesn't move around which is what you're gonna want um, after you slide that little plastic ring on it locks it in you're all good make sure you lock it in so it's straight up and down um, that's easiest for cleaning and cooling and everything or in the end it's how it's gonna sit on there too because it uh, shows the most amount of copper the other thing you're probably gonna see me do before I put this on is clean off the top and into the CPU as you can see right now it's got old coolant on there and we want to get that off um, some people will say just slap her on there and other people will tell you that uh, you should clean it off so that way you don't get uh, hot and cold spots I don't know there it's you know one of those things where it all depends if who you listen to and who tells you to do it so follow your manual do what you'd like I'm gonna probably be cleaning off the top end and then I'm gonna be smacking this on and tying each one of these screws down if you're scared that these thumb tight screws are going to be coming loose if you really want to, you can put a little bit of blue Loctite. Make sure you do not use red or you'll never get it off. But if you use a little bit of blue, it's not going to back out. But even then, it all depends on what you want. So that's the next part. Just uh, taking it and tying the screws down. All right. And then from there, it's just putting your graphics card back in. Uh, but we will show you the finished project. All right, guys. So after you've tied down your CPU, fan and you've got everything nice and buttoned up tied in your graphics card make sure you got your powers into your graphics card and then uh, just make sure all your case wires that you want plugged are plugged in just a checklist for you and make sure all your hard drive cables are plugged in and 
from there you should be good. The only other thing that uh, I had to do because I used both fans was I had to actually give me a sec here. I had to actually use the Y connector, which I did. I put the Y connector in there and I Y connected the power cable going off of the CPU fan like so. How it had uh, the Y connector so one fan goes in and the second fan goes in. Instead I put one fan in and then I put in the intake, the power cable coming off the intake into the Y connector. As you can see, um, even with this four pin, because a lot of people are going to look at it and say, oh, that's a three pin. Where am I going to plug that in? If you look at even the four pins, the bracketing system is meant for a three pin. So you can still plug the three pin into a four pin. So hope that helps you out. Other than that, uh, plug those two into the one Y connector, plug it into the CPU port, and then with the extra chat or the extra fan, plug that into the, one of the chassis fan ports. I found that to be the easiest. Um, but yeah, other than that, just uh, make sure everything's grounded out. Make sure everything's all good. Like I said, just check your pins and make sure everything's connected from this point. Plug it in, turn it on, make sure everything's functioning. And then just tie your two case screws in and you're all ready to go. Hope this video helped you out. Press the like button if you found it interesting. And uh, of course, if you want, leave a comment in the comment section below. And subscribe if you want to see future videos. Thanks again. Have a great day.